No, this isn't the Brady Bunch. This is your friends at Kentucky Sports Radio, where we are sharing our NCAA tournament predictions and our bracket special presented by Monticello Bank. I'm Nick Roush, joined by Jacob Polachek, Stephen Peake, Jack Pilgrim, Tyler Thompson, and Zach Gagan. Just want to remind you that when you're on the road this March with Zach and Steven and everybody who's going to Pittsburgh, Monticello Bank, they go on the road with you wherever the cats go. Just download the Monticello Bank app, go NBC mobile app, or visit them at NBCBank.com. They're a local bank, which means they put the numbers on your side to get you the best rate possible. Whatever your banking needs, trust Monticello Bank in business for over 125 years. Bank local. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, Monticello Bank. They're simply the best, and this is the best time of the year. I'm your resident football, Frank, and I'm here to host with all of my resident basketball bennies as we share our upset picks, our Final Four predictions, and what you know how Kentucky season will end. There's a lot of anxiety this time of year, and that's why Jack is going to give you only good news. He's got the sources that are saying good things. He's going to keep us optimistic. Um, but, Jack, I'm not going to start by asking you Kentucky questions. I want to start by asking you who is going to pull off the big upset. Who is everyone going to be talking about when this first weekend of the NCAA tournament is over with? This is the time of year where mid-majors earn high-major jobs. Those guys are looking for their run to catapult themselves into superstardom in the coaching ranks. Unfortunately, Will Wade has already found himself in the high ranks and had to kind of like work his way down due to his own circumstances. But Will Wade is the hottest name in college basketball. He has a dream draw for him. McNeese State is rolling. I think pretty confidently that Will Wade is going to be the guy we are all talking about as he not only upsets in the first round, I think he uh, he gets Gonzaga in the first round, and then I think he knocks off Kansas in the round of 32 for a Sweet 16 scenario. I think that's going to be the guy and team that we all talk about as our next uh, Cinderella. I like Oregon over South Carolina as well. There was a lot to love uh, about what we saw from Oregon in that Pac-12 championship. And then James Madison over Wisconsin's kind of become a trendy upset pick, but there's just – too much juice there that uh, I think it's going to be worth it. Maybe it's not the actual upset itself. It's going to be closer than everybody suspects, but I, I think Wisconsin's a bunch of frauds. And as much as I'd love the storyline of potentially pairing that with Kentucky, uh, I just don't think that I don't think we'll end up seeing that. Death to Wisconsin. There's, there's nothing that can ever overcome what happened in 2015. We want all bad things to happen to them, but I do need to bring on our resident Kansas Jayhawk. If you aren't on KSR plus, <laughs> Do it now. That's where you can find all of Jacob Polachek's outstanding content. Try it a dollar for a month in March Madness. Jacob, I know you you like to rock chalk. What the hell's going on? Because I, part of me thinks that Bill Self was trying to do some weird little he, – he was playing games to, to try to avoid getting tanked down the seed line. But they looked awful against Cincinnati. So is, is Kansas as bad as we think they are going into this NCAA tournament? I think so. Um, they're not healthy. That's a big part of it. But then even at full strength, I don't think they're that great of a team. Um, and it hurts to say it, but I have them losing in the second round to Gonzaga, who I have making a Final Four run. Um, I was low on them they, they, the year they won the national title, so we'll see. But I'm not high on them this year. Bucky ball is a lot of fun. Patino style pressing up and down in your face. Uh, out, Gonzaga, eight straight sweet 16s. Just keep that in mind when you're filling out your brackets. Jacob, do you have any other upset picks that you'd like to share with our audience? I have James Madison making it to the sweet 16. And then I have a three, uh, 14 seed beating a three seed with Moorhead State. Got to represent state of Kentucky. I think that they're going to uh, beat Illinois and then Duquesne beating them in the second round to go to the Sweet 16. Ooh. Oh, interesting, interesting. Spicy. I, that is very spicy, Mr. Polachek. Moorhead State, it, I believe this is four straight 21 seasons for Preston Spradlin. And to your mm. point, Jack, um, he's one of those that's moving up after this year. They've got a lot of fifth-year seniors. And mm. um, so – uh, if you've enjoyed watching the Coach Cal Disciple at Moorhead State, I, I fear that time is coming to an end. 
Um, the time of men coming talking is coming to an end right now. Tyler, we need your <laughs> wisdom. Uh, there's there's too many guys talking. So please impart us with some of your wisdom. Who's going to pull off the shockers in March? Well, I love that segue. Um, I also have <laughs> James Madison beating Wisconsin because I just hate Wisconsin and I can't pick them to advance. Um, I have another very popular upset, though. I have number 11 seed New Mexico taking down number six seed Clemson. And I'm purely doing it just for the Jamal Mashburn Jr. Richard Patino angle. Um, I remember when Jamal Mashburn Jr. you know was getting onto the scene as a recruit, and I really wanted UK to like take him just because of the legacy angle. You know, I know he's not as highly ranked as a typical Kentucky recruit, but I will be cheering for them against Clemson. So that's mine. I also considered UAB over San Diego State. But that's another popular one, and I felt like I was picking too many upsets. So I guess that's a good question for the group. How many upsets are too many to pick in the first round? None. None. All of them. <laughs> Give them all, all of the all. above. Because the one you don't pick will be the one that happens. That's, that's true. Just pick, up, just pick them all. The only reason why I'm a little hesitant on some of the upsets is that there was a lot of – high seeds in these conference tournaments that get upset so like uab they ain't played nobody paul like so i i think you're probably smart to to stay away from that one other fun fact about new mexico jamal mashburn is their second leading scorer their leading scorer is the son of eddie house so there's a fun there's a lot of fun <laughs> connections there i also think new mexico they were talking about how great their mountain west was i don't know why they were the lowest ranked of them all i didn't really get that so i like the lobos zach are you are you on the lobo bandwagon i am so far on the lobo bandwagon that it was whenever we did our uh, our rapid reaction i guess was that when was that was like two weeks ago when we did our tournament rapid reaction it feels like i was all in on new mexico then and there Drew, or nick you left out the best angle true washington ty ty washington's uncle is a freshman at New Mexico and he's actually not that bad. So I'm all in on that team. I know there was some, yeah, Jamal Baker is still there. We've got just all these weird connections uh, to Kentucky and I'm picking them. I've got them going to the uh, elite eight there and losing to North Carolina. I've got them going past uh, Clemson, Baylor and Arizona before Hubert Davis's team finally takes them out. That's really only my main big upset though. I also have uh, James Madison going to the sweet 16 I'm cheating and looking at my bracket here, but I don't think there's any way they can beat Houston. I don't that that'll just be too much for them. Um, but in terms of other big upsets, you know, I I had I was thinking uh, hard about picking Gonzaga over Kansas, but I ultimately went with Kansas there. I did have Grand Canyon beating St. Mary's in that opening round before losing to Alabama. Um, that's really all. You know, I really I feel like I'm a lot of chalk in my bracket too, though. Like I've got I don't have anything lower than a four seed in my Final Four or anything, but. Uh, all in on New Mexico though. They're they're my elite eight pick, and I'm if they if they don't make the elite eight, my or even the Sweet Sixteen, my bracket's pretty much shot right then and there. But that's the joy of all this. So I'm I'm all in on the lobes. I, I just love that you're like I don't have that many upset picks. Just an eleven seed going to the elite eight. Yeah, you know, just ca- <laughs> that's the only one though. You know, it's yeah, just casual eleven seed. Hey, but you're you're all in on one team, and that that I'm is all an in. effective. That's an effective strategy, especially in that region. Um, the poopy region. region that was the one I covered for KSR. That one was not that great. Yeah, it stinks. There's zero. There's zero Final Four teams in the West region. There should be, but somehow one of them's got to be in there, unfortunately. So um, who who knows? Maybe the Lobos are Cinderella. The Lobes, the the, the earlobes. Uh, Peak. Who, who's lobes. your big upset? Are you? Everybody's riding the Dukes. James Madison, the most wins in the tournament. Uh, going into it. They've already got 31. They've got some big wins uh, with Michigan State victory in the non-conference. Are you also on the Dukes from James Madison, or you got upset picks elsewhere? Oh, and you're, you're there of go. course, the guy produces, it, keeps himself. <laughs> the one here. guy who does this for, for a living. Unreal. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> um, I, I, I think I do have James Madison, but that's uh, that's not my biggest. I have Mississippi State to the Elite Eight. Um Ooh. I'm, Ooh. I'm going with with Hubbard uh, and his and his three point shooting, and uh, I really liked what I saw uh, down there in Starkville. Um, and then Mitten East State again, Jack Pilgrim, uh, pretty much that. We I think we already talked about this one, so I think I'm, I might have subconsciously heard Jack, you know. And then now that's my pick. Stole also, his pick. 
Can I pick one more? I didn't. I didn't pick it here, but we got. I got to. I have. I have to pick it. Just it would. It would fix so much in my life if St. Peter's can just beat Tennessee. <laughs> Let me. T- I. I went to Murray State. I went. Uh, I went to the game, the Murray State game, because I thought. I mean, St. Peter's isn't beating both of my school, like my teams. Like that's not happening, um, and it did. So um, thank God for Purdue. Thank God for Purdue. Uh, and, and Matt never heard that before. Yeah, I know. No, they, they, yeah, they saved me a, just a little bit of embarrassment. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to take St. Peter's also to, to beat Tennessee. Ooh, it, it would be beautiful, sweet, poetic justice. And fortunately, uh, they actually play after Kentucky. So we could celebrate the upset without all these people in the internet being like, you're celebrating too much. That's giving us bad juju. It's like, no, dude. I, <laughs> you can you can celebrate your rival's demise no matter when it happens. Uh, but it would, it would take that burden off of us. And you know what? I want to appreciate all of you all for taking that burden off me because I have an upset pick that I like so much that I – like I hate how much I like it, and I'm already penciling it in. I've already been over to FanDuel. And I've made that wager plus five seventy to reach the Sweet Sixteen. The Drake Bulldogs, they won oh. the Missouri Valley last year, and everybody's cheering against them this year. They wanted to see Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Robbie Avila, Indiana State, the Sycamores. Well, no, because they're just, they're not as good. They're not as good as the Devries at Drake. The coach's son, Tucker Devries, is one of the top ten scorers in the NCAA in college basketball. He leads them. He's a six foot seven swing man that can score in a variety of ways. He's a good three point shooter. He can pull up for mid range, do a little fade away. He's excellent. And last year, I, and it, it, I need, I should have looked that up. But they were they were in the tournament last year. Had the game won against it was San Diego State actually, uh, who ends up at the final four. But he was one of thirteen. He laid a dud. He laid an egg. He's not laying an egg this go around. And more importantly, not only are they favorites in the first round matchup against Nevada. In the second round, they play Iowa State. And, folks, this is a rivalry that was played annually for 110 years. And Iowa State was like, we're not doing this anymore. Haven't played it since 2018. That second-round matchup awaits. I think you're going to get some really anxious Iowa State Cyclone fans. And um, they're one of those conference tournament champs that goes down early. There's always one or two that go down early. Uh, Do we have – I know Peak has Tennessee going down. Any ones or twos that don't escape the first weekend of the NCAA tournament? Well, I have Iowa State winning it all, so that would be a real bad uh, Drake victory for your for uh, what are they? <laughs> Who are they? what are they? Nick the Bulldogs. Bulldogs. Yeah. Oh, the Bulldogs. Okay, yeah, the Bulldogs. So, yeah, I can't with. have that happen. I, I I also might be drinking the Josh Hubbard Kool Aid with Peak as well. If he, because I mean, like he went one of eight in that last game. If he stays hot, he's got that that maybe Kimba factor in that West region Dog. so bad. Is North Carolina like? Are they really a one seed? They just lost to NC State. You know, it's like lobes. So, how do we feel about talking about number two seeds? Florida potentially Florida versus Marquette. I mean, I know Florida had the big injury in the SEC tournament, but that's that's been a popular upset pick I've seen. I, think I have I Marquette would... in the championship game, oh, <laughs> so I can't have that happen either. Foreshadowing. I got, so about, I, we're all are talking about the worst upsets for my bracket. I'm trying to win some, some a free on three subscription. I don't know about you, Jack, but I just don't. I don't want Kentucky to play Florida again. I think Florida is really good, and they can fight fire with fire with Kentucky. And it's one of those weird deals. How do they respond after tragedy? Like that, the weird Kevin Ware thing in 2013, like it gives me bad juju for that Florida team that is already kind of a sneaky, one of the hottest teams in the SEC going into all this. But I will say Marquette has to get past the fighting Hilltoppers first. That would be, I, I, I was looking at all of them. It, 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 they had some magic going on uh, to, to win their conference tournament. So I, I don't want to predict that, but I think that's going to make them a little bit scary. I just I don't believe in Marquette, and and I unfortunately I do think Florida does. Florida does end up uh, surpassing Marquette, and we do see that in the Sweet Sixteen. Gulp. <laughs> I love Z- Z- Jack and Nick can ruin my this. bracket. Yeah, you you two could ruin my bracket by the end of the weekend <laughs> with your with your upset picks. Can I can I admit something with brackets? I- are you going to say you hate them? 
No, 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 no. I'm not like oh. uh, Darren Rovell, who's too good to do one or anything. But it's now like the last thing I do. Like, I was on my phone yeah. Sunday night making bets. I was getting, uh, seeing what my squares were. <laughs> like, it's now like the fifth biggest thing that I do in March. And I don't know if Tyler, if it's a byproduct of doing this job where you're like, it, it gets kicked down the road, but I just, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not jumping into every bracket challenge that I get invited to anymore. I hear that. I think it's the rise of sports gambling. Shout out FanDuel. I mean, I'm much more interested in that than I am the bracket. Like I, I only did my bracket an hour ago. And part of that's been because we're busy, but it's just like, oh man, like I can finally dig my teeth into it. But like, are brackets still the entry point for the casual basketball fan? Because I feel like everybody's got a friend who doesn't watch any basketball, but they'll still fill out a bracket in March. Like, is that still the case? Oh yeah, yeah, for the casual, yeah, yeah. true. I, I do the miss fan. the uh, like. My mom used to always fill out her bracket with the one that came in the newspaper. And it's just, there, it, I feel like it needs, it's nice having something tangible instead of just like right. an app or something like that. Um, but like my, I, I get, my kid gets into it. I'll have him pick teams, look at the logos and pick which one he wants. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's, Cox. it's P Cox. <laughs> make, sure, make sure we get that one make that get that one it still me. feels weird to like cheer for them but hey if they beat tennessee let's go i mean she ain't always there anymore yeah yeah different coach different team we can cheer for him Absolutely. yeah this is my third game now pulling for st peter's so there we go <laughs> the enemy of my enemy is my friend and st hey, peter's bingo. you are our friend this week we need to figure out who's going to be in the final four to help you fill out your bracket jacob i'm curious who you have Going to Phoenix. Phoenix, here's lovely this time of year. Not too hot. Um, it should be. It could be. Could be nice. Great. Great time to golf. Who's going to be there golfing for the Final Four? Well, I already gave up uh, one of my picks with Gonzaga. Um, I'm going UConn versus Baylor, and I'm going Kentucky versus Gonzaga with Kentucky getting revenge. Ooh, Ooh. revenge on a big stage. I like it. That would be. Um, it, although, like, well, I don't know if my heart can handle UConn versus Kentucky in a championship game again. <laughs> like that, it's it, especially because they they. It feels like UConn is becoming the new Duke. I know Duke still sucks, but peak. It's there's something about Danny Hurley. Like they're really asserting themselves as a very hateable villain in this sport. Yeah, and I. Uh, I do not want them winning more national championships. I uh, think this would get up, that would get them to six. So they're closing in. I don't like that. So any really, I mean, if Kentucky can't win it, then uh, really anybody but like UConn and Duke, Kansas, no more blue bloods because UConn's a or blue Purdue. blood now, right? Has that been I, voted on? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think if they do well in this tournament, they are well, unfortunately. They have the flukiest championships. The flukiest championships. <laughs> They've won as an as a what a nine seed or an eight seed. They've won as a three and a four in the in the most random tournaments. Like the when it gets just blown up and it's super random, that's when UConn swoops in and steals a title. So uh, yeah, it's well, a, it's they shouldn't have five championships. This is ridiculous. That would make it a good reason to pick against them because they always win as like a three or a four seed. Um, but to your point. UConn needs to be a blue blood. They've won five championships since Indiana won their last. Which, just a <laughs> reminder, one shining moment is just this icon, and it did not exist until Indiana's last national championship. That's how long it's been since Indiana has been relevant in the sport of college basketball. If they are considered a blue blood, they're the worst of the worst, and UConn is definitely in that territory. We also can't have any back-to-back -back winners either because that's happened twice since Wooden. We can't. At give them any more prestige. I refuse to let it happen. Peek, why don't you go ahead and tell us who's in your Final Four? Um, all right. So, uh, well, I got UConn, of course, in my Final Damn Four. Damn it, Peek! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Arizona, Kansas, um, and then in the championship game, uh, the Wildcats are taking on the Wildcats. We're doing, we're running 97 back. Uh, that was the the first game that I remember watching as a kid. I also picked it when I had to pick the final score, 84-79. Let's do that. We'll, we're flipping it. And uh, that kind of answers my – well, we'll get to that later. But, uh, no, I, I think uh, I, 
I, I, I like this. This this Final Four would be like one of the most watched Final Fours of all time. Uh, so like I just want that. I just like I'm trying to speak it into existence. This this could be one of the most fun tournaments we've ever experienced. Why not? I just nothing's more appropriate than Stephen Peake's first basketball memory is an overtime loss in the national championship game. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. It's, it's so perfect. Yeah. Jack, who you got? Oh, so I I didn't know what I was going what path I was gonna go until I heard Rob Dillingham speak. Because Rob Dillingham uh, talked at the podium after the selection Sunday, right after the heartbreak in Nashville. You know, they went bowling. In case you didn't uh, talk to Coach Kyle afterward, bowling, bowling. bowling. Uh, <laughs> so Rob Dillingham was asked his his favorite moment. First, it was Antonio Reeves. Antonio said, "You know, 2012 National Championship. I love the way they locked in. Blah 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 blah. Very very uh, traditional answer." And then Rob Dillingham said, yeah, my favorite March moment is uh, Kemba in 2011. And we're like, do you do you not understand what's what this is? Like, do you know <laughs> how he got to that point? But I love it because if there was one guy that has the Kemba in him, it's Rob Dillingham. So I'm I as soon as he said that, I kind of just had the vision in my head of Kentucky, UConn in the championship game. So that's where I'm going with it with uh, Baylor and Purdue as my other uh, other finalists out in Phoenix. Man, I, you know, we are Kentucky Sports Radio, and I think a lot of people expect good vibes from Kentucky. But Tyler, I did not expect this many Final Four championship game predictions. So I got to ask you, who is, is Kentucky in your Final Four? Are you going to keep this train rolling? No. And I will go ahead and boo myself. Um, I just, I just can't, man. Like my head, the head versus the heart. Yeah, I mean, by Thursday, I'm sure I'll change my mind. Um, I've got the chalkiest, most boring Final Four ever, but I'm going UConn, Arizona, Houston, and Purdue. Um, I, I went back and forth on Arizona or Baylor. Um, I ultimately went with Arizona because it'll be Phoenix, and you know, there's a storyline there. Um, like the rest of you all, I, I really don't like UConn, but I really don't see anybody else besides potentially Kentucky, if they can get it together, kind of challenging them. Um, you know, Dan Hurley's super annoying, and it seems like he just like eats, drinks, and sleeps basketball, and like he's on Twitter all the time talking about it. So he kind of seems like a man possessed. Um, if anything, he'll become the most unlikable person in my eyes in college basketball if they win. So, you know, I'll take the villain route. Um, and then Houston, I, I know they just came off that loss, but I think their defense is really good. And if they can get the momentum going in the first couple you know, games, I'm worried how Kentucky will match up with them. We'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah. And then Zach Eady is just kind of a freak of nature. And I don't really love the Midwest region, but I can't force myself to pick Tennessee to make a final four. It's just in my mind, it's not going to happen. So if it's not Purdue out of the Midwest, I'd say probably Creighton. Three teams in the Midwest, the top three seeds. They have Purdue's the only one that's made a Final Four, and that was a hundred years ago. Um, you also have um, Tennessee and Creighton, who was basically a buzzer beater away from reaching the Final Four last year when they lost in Louisville, and that's why I just love Creighton. I love Creighton so much. I think they have a great, great combination. They're just such a high four team. Um, Trey Alexander, Baylor Shireman, uh, and um, now I'm forgetting the the third guy in that punch. I don't know why it's escaping me right now. I I, I get my time in the spotlight. Cockburn in the, in the in the paint, big shot blocker. Uh, and then even the point guard when he gets hot, man, he he shoots it from like 35 feet, and you're like, there's no way that's going in. And then sure enough, it goes in. So I think. It's probably kind of like, and I, I don't want to bring up more bad memories, but it's probably like Wisconsin was went losing to Kentucky in 2014, and then that's the beginning of the championship DVD until Duke pays off the refs and Coach K rigs it to win the national championship. Duke can't rig it this year. That's why Creighton, they're my Final Four team. They're my national Ooh. champion. They're Ooh. going to beat Houston in the Final Four. And then on the other side, you all – you can't – do not pick UConn to go to the Final Four. If you want to win your bracket challenge, you will not put UConn in the Final Four. They are the chalkiest <laughs> pick, plus 110 on FanDuel to go to the Final Four. You can't have them there. There aren't repeats in the national championship. I know they've been dominant. They've been great. But you know who also is pretty great is Terrence Shandon. 
I mean, there's we don't need to talk about his character. Much better basketball player than he is as a person. Uh, great basketball player. He's he's the one who's got that dominant Kimba factor, if you will. But also they've got some good surrounding pieces around him. Uh, and I, I think Illinois is the team that pulls off the upset in that region. And I just hate the West, and I feel like you got to pick somebody. So I just landed on Arizona, but I like draw a name out of a hat. So that that's my final four. The Blue Birds, Blue Jays, Blue Blue Jays, Blue Jays, Blue Jays, Blue Jays. Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. Gre- Dougie, we need to get Greg McDermott shots from the crowd cheering on his dad. That'd be fun. <laughs> That'd be fun. Zach, who uh, who do you have uh, losing to? You got. We know Marquette is one of them. Who else is in your final four? Well, you can. Uh, yeah, you know who Marquette has to be to get there. But Nick, I'm glad you just went on that Creighton rant because guess who I have in my final four. Woo! The Blue Jays for all the yeah. reasons you just said. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna relay them again. Sorry I also for have the uh, no perfectly fine. That was yeah. I, I didn't have nearly as much information ready to go as you did. So you did a, a much better there breaking them down. Uh, and then yeah, I went with the Iowa State pick. Um, I actually think that region is just tough. But I'm I'm on I'm with you as well. Don't pick UConn. Leave UConn out of the Final Four, and your and your bracket will look better. Um, you know they they're gonna have a tough path. Uh, tough path, especially if they have to play Boo Booey in the second round. Then you got potentially Auburn or Iowa State or even Illinois. Um, but I'm I'm ultimately going with Illinois State out of that region. I have them playing North Carolina because, like uh, we've kind of said, someone has to win. <clears throat> someone has to win the West region, and I'm going with North Carolina. So I have them, uh, North Carolina, losing to Iowa State in that Final Four, and then I have Marquette beating Creighton on the other side, and I've got Iowa State pulling it off. I can't imagine Iowa State has even been to. A national championship before i don't know that off the top of my head but i can't imagine there's been many uh so i'm all let's go cyclones cyclones is my pick here and i've got a, a one two twos and a three seed in my final four what's you going with your you're getting a little crazy on us with the otzel burgers uh i quick google tells me iowa state was last in the final four in 1944 so i was not born then <laughs> I, I, I don't none of us were thankfully <laughs> people with yeah. access to the youtubes were in the top four we've got a lot of pleasant kentucky basketball projections here a lot of final four picks does anybody want to just share their road tyler you you're kind of wincing is there do you, you want to share with us your your big fears <laughs> and why you're not putting the cats in the final four well, I, I mean, they've got a great draw. I will give them that. I was really, really worried. If you had asked me to fill out or predict where Kentucky was going to go after the loss in the SEC tournament, I would have been really scared about the first weekend. Um, but I felt a lot better when I saw the draw. And I think Kentucky can definitely make it to the Elite Eight. It's just the matchup with Houston I worry about. And also, can this team put together four straight wins, you know, against competition that gets better and better and better? We thought, you know, they won five straight going into the SEC tournament and we're rolling on all cylinders and they just laid an egg. And I worry about the first weekend in particular, just because of the pressure that's going to be on the squad. But I think if they get outside of the first weekend, get, you know, sweet 16, get a win, maybe they can go on a run. I just worry about Houston's defense and, I don't know. I really, really want to be wrong, but I have Kentucky losing in the Elite Eight to Houston. I, I do as well. Um, I think my greatest hope is that Texas A&M, Wade Taylor and Tyrese Radford somehow get hot against Houston, which is perfectly plausible. Um, my biggest worry might even be the draw. How many times has Kentucky gotten a bad draw and then they just win in spite of it, but then they get the good draw and everything opens up and just like, the opposite happens. You lose to Kansas State and Bruce freaking Weber in the Sweet 16. Um, yeah. And, Jack, I betting based on trends alone is very stupid, right? It's it's the dumbest way possible. But every Final Four team going to the SEC Championship game and zero NCAA tournament winners losing the first round of the conference tournament, I can't ignore those trends. But can you tell me I'm stupid for following those trends? This this season has been a lot of firsts. With first of uh, you know first time we've lost three in a row at, at inside Rupp Arena, the UNC Wilmington. This has been just kind of like history. Like and on the flip side, we've never seen an offense like this. We've never had the scoring totals like it, just a lot of unique things that have created just a. Your guess is as good as mine. 
that's why I would have felt so much better. I, we have seen after the fact that winning the SEC tournament meant nothing because we saw what happened to Auburn. You go through the gauntlet, win it on Sunday, you see the confetti, you see Bruce Pearl crying, like you get that emotional moment. And then two hours later, you get sent out to Spokane as a four seed in UConn's region. You're just like, how did that happen? So the point was made, but I, I still do kind of agree with some of the, the his, historical data that says making it to Saturday at minimum would have been important. And, and, you know, for the fans and all that, that would have been awesome as well. But that is the one set I keep going back to. But in a in a season of those types Ups of things, yeah. I'd, li- I'd like to see a, uh, you know, them kind of buck those trends and, and you know, kind of par- carve their own path, if you will. They're a low floor team, a high ceiling team. Um, and so you just kind of hope that they got the low floor out of the way. Question for Jacob. I want Jacob to answer because it probably would be Kentucky Houston with the final four on the line. How many points does Kentucky have to score to win that game? <laughs> 70. <laughs> yeah, I'd say around probably 75. Um, yeah, 75, maybe 80. Uh, I think they got to put up some points, uh, but it could be low scoring. If it's low, if it's too low scoring, then they've got no chance against Houston. It's a conundrum because Houston is so good defensively and you just worry that like, I'm just kind of scrolling through, uh, they've given up, uh, 37, 66, 55, like 20, Texas scored 72 on. That was an overtime. There's a twenty point overtime. Like Zach, you might be right. Like it might be race to seventy, but I don't know if Kentucky could hold Houston to seventy points or fewer. Like it's, probably not. Is that who who who's the team that uh we're worrying most about for Kentucky? And who's the player we're worrying most about? Pete Pete, you're I feel like you have worst case scenarios in your mind quite a bit. So <laughs> the team the team that worries you the most and the player you worry about, uh, you know, they underperform one game and then all of a sudden everything falls apart. Oh, muted again. Yeah. <laughs> did. Sorry, I'm doing all the clicking and everything over here. So I was uh, uh it's all good. Making sure all that good. No, but uh, I uh obviously Houston is uh is the team that I'm that I'm like most uh, concerned about uh like for everything you guys said and i just i've said too if you get to the elite eight like that's like oh, that's a pretty good season uh so and it's hard to, to be like too upset about that um i would say that the guy that i'm most concerned about is uh walter clayton jr and um if you get that matchup again and uh kind of know what he did to us last time is there anybody on Oakland I should be concerned about? I know there's a team that makes like nine threes a game. Should I? How nervous should I be on Thursday? They play zone and have a couple guys that just shoot the hell out of the ball. Great. And a big 6'6 six, six wing, which will probably be the biggest issue. Love Trey it. Townsend, he's good. Yeah. Trey Townsend, yeah, player of the but, year but in the he, conference. Here's why you shouldn't be concerned, Peak. They're What's, better. Like By playing his own against Kentucky feels like a fool's errand, right? That's Atlas pushing mm. the or no Sisyphus pushing the ball up the hill. Like, what, what are you doing? You can't play zone <laughs> against Kentucky. It's stupid. Yeah, won't we just we'll shoot them out of that, right? I I, I would hope so. Tower, who's going to have? Because the one thing that's fun about this team too, not just the stars. You know, I, I feel like we've had the least amount of Reed Shepherd content possible on this uh, selection <laughs> special presented by Monticello Bank, oh. but. There's Kentucky plays eight or nine guys. So who is going to be the one guy we're not expecting that has an awesome game that they kind of pull it out of nowhere that, I mean, we saw Dominique Hawkins do that uh, for a game or two, play defense in the 2014 NCAA tournament run. Derek Willis was going to be the hero of the North Carolina game until Drake May uh, had something Uh. to say. So who is going to be the surprise player that propels Kentucky to, to a win here in March? Has their March moment? Well, I really hope it's Trey Mitchell because Kentucky needs him. He's a Pittsburgh native. I think that's really cool if that storyline holds out. He's been struggling lately. He's finally working back to like 100% health. Um, I I keep thinking about what happens if NC State wins and Kentucky wins and then we're facing DJ Burns and NC State in the second round. Who in the world are you going to put on that guy? Um, 
I don't even know. Trey's probably the best option. I can just imagine that giant man snapping Big Z over his leg and all of our other seven footers. Um, but yeah, I think Trey, if he has a great game, he needs two great games in Pittsburgh to get rolling. I think he changes this team. Um, also, Justin Edwards is a good candidate. I mean, we've seen how he can take over a game and, and make an impact. And I feel like Kentucky, when they're playing its best, it's because Justin Edwards has a good game. So those are my candidates. I love that. I love that selection tower with Trey Mitchell because it does feel like I mean he he only made three shots, but it felt like he got the ball rolling in the right direction, um, and he's poised to at some point be a very important part of a win. Um, and finally, if we're if, Jack, if we're going to have, I know you already had your Rob Dillingham epiphany that you shared with us, but is there? Like, does Reed Shepard, can he, if he, if, if Kentucky does what we want, is he just like God in the state of Kentucky? Does does Andy Bashir give him his job? Like, how does that work? That, that is an answer. Like Reed, Reed Shepard has a chance to solidify statue status. Like right now you, we kind of had these dreams of when he signed here. Okay. Maybe he has that moment in year three or like down the road. If he is able to take this team to Phoenix, considering the historical context, you know, lack, lack of final four since 2015, all of the pressure and weight on this program right now, if he is the reason why Kentucky is propelled into number nine status, like, I don't know what else, you could ever dream of for a player. He has the game winner. He has the, you know, the quotes and the personality. He has the Donato's commercial. Like you go down the list. This kid has checked every single box since the minute he arrived. Go back to Toronto. That dude was blocking perimeter shots and getting breakaway dunks. And we were going, oh my God, he's the next coming of Jesus. Like he has done everything up to this point. The one missing box that has left that that is there's left to be checked is is Reed Shepard. So I'm I'm hoping for that. Uh, another guy that I am selfishly rooting for is DJ Wagner because he was the guy that you signed to have a March moment. Like that's the alpha, that's the dog, that's the guy that we kind of expected to have the ball the ball in his hands to win the game at some point. We haven't gotten that moment from him, from him yet. He's kind of been slumping a little bit. A lot of the chatter about who needs to be starting. Why is it why is it not Reed and Rob? It would be just so DJ Wagner for him to go win us the game against Oakland. Like that's kind of the vision I have is he takes care of business against Oakland and then we have a, a matchup against uh, uh, Rob Dillingham's what was going to be his future home in NC State and he goes for 40 in that one against Joel Justice. I think that would be hilarious. <laughs> I'd get a good laugh out of it. I think this has been pretty fun. This has been good. We've had a nice, well-rounded conversation. Uh, we're split on Kentucky in the Final Four, and I I'm going to ask for parting thoughts, but Zach already has more parting thoughts. So, Zach, what are your parting thoughts? And then I'll ask everybody else what their parting thoughts are. Well, you all conveniently left out my predictions for Kentucky. Um, I, I think I know why, unfortunately. I'm the one that has them <laughs> – not making the Elite Eight. I have them losing, uh, as I've talked about with Marquette there in the Sweet 16. Um, and as Tyler pointed out to me right as before we started, I was the lone person who picked Kentucky to lose in the second round last year. So I'm not trying to say that I'm the all-knowing uh, Nostradamus here, but I'm not saying I'm not saying. So I do think Kentucky is going to have no issue with Oakland in the first round. I, I think that's a pretty good matchup for Kentucky. Like, like we said, they'll just shoot the ball you know, they'll, they'll make 15 threes and the game will be over by the second or beginning of the second half. NC State, I think, is going to be fun to watch because I'm a big DJ Burns guy right now, but he can have 30 points. And I don't think it that'll be a close game because Kentucky will run up and down the floor and he won't be halfway to half court by the time Kentucky's already got <laughs> the ball in the, in the basket. Marquette is where I really start to worry because if Tyler Kolek, their borderline All-American guard, is healthy, they have enough pieces around where I don't think, especially with Kolek, I don't think Kentucky's going to be able to defend him well enough to slow him down. Um, and then I'll end here with my final my final thought. It's more of a hot take, actually. Mm. I think Reed Shepard is going to start in the Oakland game. Ooh. Oh boy. Somebody's listening to the Colin show. <laughs> not even not even that. Well, I think it was they were more alluding to Trey Mitchell along those lines, it felt like maybe adding like a guy in to help break the break the zone. But I think 
it's just to the point now where there's just no denying that Reed Shepard needs to play probably 35 plus minutes alongside Antonio in that backcourt for this tournament. And the best way to do that is to put him in immediately. You bring Rob and DJ off the bench after five minutes, roll it out from there. I think you start Reed from day one and you just let him and Antonio Reeves kind of bring you along to glory as far as you want. Um, and that's, that's where I'll end here. Um, Jacob, before uh, I've, I've got a question for you um, and it has to do with Marquette team. Can you name the last time Shaka Smart coached a basketball team after the first weekend of the NCAA tournament? <laughs> oh God. It had to be with VCU, right? 2011 uh, VCU, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only time he's ever been out of the first weekend, he went to the Final Four with VCU, and yet he has a reputation as his reputation. One time out of the first weekend. March. About to be yeah. two. Incredible. It's incredible. Oof. Oof. Yeah, I, I feel like I picked him to go to the Sweet 16. I thought picking a two seed to go to the Sweet 16 would be normal, but that seems like a hot take here. <laughs> it, I'm, I'm just giving you all the information you need to second guess all of your picks. Um, Tyler, are you going to be able to keep these guys well-behaved in Pittsburgh? I hope so. I hope so. No, it's – I think it'll be a really fun trip. I'm hoping that I, I just feel like the stress is going to start to mount over the coming days. I mean, losing early in the SEC tournament did not do any favors to the psyche of Big Blue Nation heading into this. And I just I think if they can get the through the first game, have a big win, hopefully that'll take some of the pressure off and we can cruise to the Sweet 16 because I'll be honest. I don't really want to think about what's going to happen if they lose one of those first two games because it'll be interesting. I mean, I feel like if we're breaking down the scenarios, first weekend loss is action will probably be taken, and I don't know if I'm ready to face that reality yet. So instead, I'm just going to focus on Kentucky getting at least to the Sweet 16 to the Elite Eight. You know, hopefully by then they can get some momentum rolling, go to the Final Four, possibly win it all that's the best possible scenario my head's not letting me go there but my heart is already in phoenix so the last time kentucky played a team from the horizon league in the ncaa that's only one by nine beat northern kentucky 2017 uh deer and fox and co end up getting to the elite eight uh, but that's at play thursday night 7 10 uh, I also don't like that it's the same time slot and TV slot as the St. Peter's game. Anybody else get that too? Like Why that's the dumbest. Bring that up? I know Man. it's so stupid, but I just I I, I operate. I, I think so much of like history and stats and blah blah blah. It just clouds my judgment. Reed Shepard, Rob and Reed, and now I'm on that feed. Reed and Rob, now I'm on my job. We got the Wildcat Water Boys. The good vibes are flowing. We're bringing them to Pittsburgh. KSR is going to be there with coverage. Make sure you're subscribed to the KSR YouTube channel. Check out KSR Plus. Only a dollar to try it out for a month. During March Madness, we're going full court press. It's going to be like Bucky Ball with KSR covering the cats on what should be an eventful March Madness for everybody here at KSR. We appreciate you joining us on the Monticello Bank NCAA Tournament Bracket Special.